I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel, wherever you are in the world. Enough respect. Um, today I wanted to talk about social influences, social influencers who can become groomers. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about these social influencers who are right-wing extremists. Now when I'm looking at videos, I don't just look at I don't just look at white black videos, I don't I look at all sorts of videos. And I look at people who you probably wouldn't even think I would look at. I look at the rednecks, I look at the racist ones, I look at every all I look at a cross section of videos. Anyway, I've come across two um, videos that I find quite disturbing. The reason why I find them disturbing is because the way that the two influences, I'll say, because one of them has 95,000 views and the other one, who's a female, has 40, not views, subscribers, sorry, has 45,000 subscribers. And what they are harping on about is how white people are becoming a minority. And they are, I don't even know how, you know, they have got such a creative and artistic way of expressing themselves. I don't know how they do it. Unless you're on the ball, and I'm not always on the ball, you will not pick up how dangerous they are. Absolutely dangerous. They're actually groomers. They're actually grooming people, the vulnerable people who may not have an identity, who may not um, necessarily be um, strong, strong in their belief systems, who might feel a bit worried, they might have lost their job, they might not have... Um, Oh, what other kind of things? Things that make them lose their self-esteem. Or, you know, like the situation like with um, the immigrants then. And what they're trying to say is that the immigrants are the reason why people don't have jobs. They're the reasons why there's not enough housing. There's a reasons why um, a section of white people are poor. They harp on that. But they do it in such an insidious way. And it's, it's really, really, um, I don't even want to say scary is the word, but they do it in such a polite way. And they're very, very careful what they say because they don't want people to believe that they are um, not necessarily swaying. Well, it is swaying because what they're doing is... They, they're using um, innuendo, they use, um, they talk about incidents like one of them, they were talking about Sadiq Khan being associated with Islam. And what they won't do, they won't put in the links or they'll put in links of conspiracy theorists. They don't put any authentic links, but they leave their audience believing that this is the way things are. I, the thing is, it's very difficult to explain. But if you look up the book, The Fall of the Western Man, and you look up the, the um, campaign about They Didn't Tell Us. Was it They Didn't Tell Us? Yeah, I think it was called They Didn't Tell Us. They didn't ask us. Look up those two pieces of information and you'll see what I mean. Now, when I'm thinking about social influencers becoming groomers, I'm thinking how these type of people who are dangerous can slip through the net just because they're smart enough not to use the words racism. They're, they don't use the words... Um, 
They won't use words like Nazi or neocolonialism or fascism or communism. They won't use none of those words. But by innuendo alone, they make it seem as though black people are the problem. They'll also, um, like the other day they was talking about, oh, they were talking about the adverts. And they were saying that um, people like Tesco, Sainsbury's and um, Asda, I think it was. They reckoned that there was too much diversity in their adverts. So they complained and said that, you know, if you do not um, quit the diversity, we are not going to support your um your shops we're not going to buy at your shops and you'll notice that um, Tesco, Asda and Sainsbury's they don't have any blacks in their adverts I never noticed that before and it wouldn't have even dawned on me but what they did say which was interesting was that um, John Lewis cleverly included diversity and they don't even like that what they've said is the dragon represents the immigrant more or less the foreigner the outsider he's come in with his flames and he's destroying everything by blowing things out and spoiling the christmas through what is normal for him to do and then when he realizes that what he's done is destructive for the um, for Christmas, he runs and hides, and then the little girl, as we know, goes and gives him something that he can use. And what they're saying is that that dragon represents the outsider. It re it represents the immigrant. It represents the foreigner. You see how deep these people go. And this is what and they're, they're saying, you've got to, um, they reckon Debenhams and Marks and Sparks, you know, Marks and Sparks has got that jump, jump um, advert. Oh, they're slagging them off, talking about they've got too many black faces in there and they're not, they, they don't know their audience or they don't know their purchasers. Maybe they don't. Maybe young people who are going to do that jump jump might not go to Marks and Sparks. They might, there might be some truth to that. Because what they're saying is, is like their grandmothers and, you know, their aunts and uncles that are going to go to Marks and Sparks. And they wouldn't really relate to that advert. There could be some truth to that. But my point is, is that how far their mind has gone, what they watch and they talk, you know, and they... Oh, it's really, it's really, really disconcerting. It makes me feel so uncomfortable when I listen to them and I think to myself, with the way that they're speaking, these are the type of people who can turn people against the, mini the minorities. They're calling themselves minorities, mind you. They're saying that, you know, um, I think they quoted something like, oh, the whites are 45%, which is a lie. The whites are 80%. But, you know, people who are not checking um, figures and data, what I'm so glad about, there's somebody called Kay and Skittle, and they've just thrown them, um, they, did a, they did a rebuttal of one of these um, video personnels, one of these influence, Mark Collett, he did a rebuttal on everything he said and he's even said that his girlfriend wears a Nazi tattoo. So you've got people like this on YouTube with 95,000 subscribers soliciting people, grooming them to become anti-white, to become anti-black, to oppose immigration. And it's fine to oppose immigration, but when you make it 
dangerous or when you make it appear like black people are the enemy and you've got to be careful because they're taking over and we've got to do something about it but they do it in such a surreptitious way you have to be so careful about people like those because they're extremely clever extremely clever now I didn't think of it as grooming at the time but I was doing a course um, it was about radicalization and terrorism and I was looking at the definitions and as I was reading the definitions I thought hey hold on a minute that's what those guys are doing they're actually grooming people they're actually radicalizing people but if you was to listen to them they're not overt they're not crazy people and when they when they put people in the forefront they do it so cleverly and they scare they edit so skillfully they're absolutely actually actually they're fantastic I listen to them and I marvel at the how articulate they are how clever how precise how they use their words so ah oh, that's all I can say I, I love words I love um, communication I love how people interact I like the way people communicate with others what I don't like is this devious way of getting people on side based on false information based on contrived information, based on manipulation of the truth. That is what I don't like. And there'll be so many people out there who will believe people like that. And because he's doing it in such a gentle and gentlemanly way, they won't even have a clue. All they'll know is that they start feeling uncomfortable. They'll start feeling resentful about black people and immigrants and anybody of colour and they won't quite know why but there'll be something it's like a subtle form of indoctrination and that is scary but you've got people like Mark Collett you've got people like Laura Towler on YouTube with masses and masses of subscribers and like I said I am so grateful for um, social influences like Kay and Skillet who challenge what they say and they actually have the evidence. Where Mark Collett has not put the evidence and skipped the evidence deliberately to manipulate the truth, he's actually put it out there. And so I am glad there's somebody out there who can try and, you know, eat, level the playing field. The only thing is, is that I don't think the people who listen to Mark Collett are going to listen to Kay and Skittle. That is the sad thing. That is the sad thing. They might kind of look at it a little bit, but I think the ones who listen to Mark, Mark Collett, they've already on that vein. They're already along that um, mindset. They're already there. Thousands of them. Anyway, I just want to tell you the definitions, which is what made me... Um, ask if social influencers can become groomers because the thing is when you're thinking about Facebook and YouTube they're really looking at people who are, who are overt and then they're looking for you know words in tags and you know in the description and they're looking for key words in the um, in what you say I mean it's probably very likely that because I've used those key words this video won't even get played but they're so clever to avoid those words. So clever. And yet they still are able to send the message that they want to send. Extremely clever. 
I mean, I've got to give them the props. I really, really do. But anyway, um, Terrorism Act 2000 is an action that endangers or causes serious violence to persons, people, causing serious damage to property or seriously interferes or disrupts an electronic system. The use or threat must be designed to influence the government or to intimidate the public and is made for the purpose of advancing a political, religious or ideological cause. So we've got the attack on London Bridge um, just last week or over this weekend um, and they killed him on the spot. I mean, I would have thought they would have tried to find out who his links were, but I think from my heard today, they already knew who he was. I don't know how they knew who he was when he was doing it so that they shot him, but I don't know. Some things just don't make sense sometimes. But anyway, apparently he had been radicalised and, you know, he was serving time and then they let him out. It's really sad for the people who died, that young man and that lady. Um, so radicalisation is a process by which a person comes to support terrorism. Extremism, this is what I would put those two under, is a vocal or active opposition of fundamental British values, including democracy. But this is talking about the opposition of fundamental British values. Oh yeah, that's right. Including democracy, the rule of law, individual liberty, mutual respect and tolerance of different faiths and beliefs. So this is the opposition of that. So, um, yeah. And then we have um, those who are vulnerable to radicalisation. Um, it does not mean that they're terrorists, but they could be at the risk of being exploited and groomed by people like Collar and Towler, who have a benign approach to recruiting those who can be exploited and turned into their way of thinking. Because it's always about them and us with their, with their, um, with their videos. It's always them and us. And it's, like I said, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if, Laura Towler is actually Mark Collins' girlfriend. It would not surprise me. It's like they're the male and female version of each other. And then you've got vulnerability, bewildered voters, unemployed, loss of identity, low self-esteem. These are the people who are capable of being injured, indoctrinated. They find it difficult to defend themselves. They're open to moral and ideological attacks, susceptible to radicalisation. These are the people who could be without their jobs, who could have lost their homes, who have been separated from their families, and they, they, they're made to believe that immigration is the cause of it. And that's what you find with the far-right extremists. They try to blame everything on the immigrants to create hostility, to create division. And that is what I'm trying to say. It's not the truth. Yeah, immigration is a small part, but there's a myriad of things that contribute to that situation. Failings of the government, for one. Selling off um, all the industries is another. Selling off privatising is another. So don't get it all twisted. So um, also, other people are susceptible to radicalisation are those with mental illness those with learning difficulties, those with personality disorders, those with low self-esteem, that personality disorders, the guy that um, stabbed those people on the bridge, he had a personality disorder. I believe he was schizophrenic. Um, identity crisis. All of these could become victims of extremism and terrorism. They did not start that way, but are usually lured in by those seeking to influence them. That's what I mean. You can just have people who are in a certain state of mind at a particular time and they get lured in by people like this who seem legitimate, who seem sincere. And, you know, they don't know what's hit them. It's just like, oh, yeah, I lost my job. You know, I don't have a home. My, my wife has left me. And then you see those bloody 
niggas over there and they're living in a house and driving a car, they've got a job. It's their fault. That's what they'll have you believe. They won't say it's because, you know, they've sold off um, the post office. They've sold off all these big, you know, all these big companies. They won't tell you it's because of that. Oh, no. They'll make you believe that it's because people like me are sitting here talking to you now is the reason why they're unemployed and they don't have a home. And that's a sad thing because when you're in that vulnerable position, you're likely to believe it. What else can you believe? You're going to think, bloody hell, this is, this is, is this what I've come to? You know, I'm a white person in a white country. And then you've got these blacks driving around in big cars, having big jobs, you know, dressing up in a suit, going out to work, and I haven't got nothing. I've got sweet F.A., and look at them, and it just seethes inside them, makes them angrier and angrier and angrier. And you have people like those two groomers, I'll call them, who jump onto situations like that, feed them by their little innuendos, their exclusions. That's what they do. Life experiences can also be another factor why people get groomed. Luring unsuspecting individuals into a warped way of thinking. Those in isolation, those who are lonely, those who have been bullied or excluded because of unemployment, poverty, racism, immigration, lack of opportunity, let down by society like the politicians, drugs and alcohol. All of those can be contributory factors. YouTube and Facebook are fertile ground for grooming and they have thousands, these two have thousands. Like I said, one has 95,000 subscribers, the other one has 45,000. Thank God they haven't got millions, but they're on their way. Now Mark Collett's on his way to get the millions, 95,000, it won't be long. And each one influences another of like mind and each one tells the other. And then they have these um, private um, platforms that they all get together and they all fund each other. And it's, it's not good, folks. They're just spreading propaganda. So, and they target groups who, recognize, who they recognise who are vulnerable. We also have external influences opposed to dominant groups or ideologies that disempower other groups within society. Some use or suggest violence as a means to achieving political ends. Well, he doesn't do that. I haven't heard in any of his um, videos where he's advocating violence. But, you see, when you, you don't have to. You see, when Trump talks and he makes his little innuendos, he doesn't have to tell them to go out and kill anybody. They get so riled up themselves that they do it anyway. When that guy went and shot all those people, those Muslims in the church, they did it just because I think somebody had said something and he went off in his little rampage. So they don't have to advocate violence in their videos. But by stirring people up, getting, making them discontent, making them resentful and creating the target for that resentfulness, that is where the problem arises. That is when things get out of hand. That is why sometimes you see one person go around shooting everybody in a rampage and they think, oh, he was such a nice person. What happened? He wouldn't hurt a fly. What happened? Mark Collett happened. Laura Towler happened. That's what happened. People who inject negativity negative thoughts into people who just want a job, who just want a way of life, who just want to live. And you make them so uncomfortable and dissatisfied by injecting them with all of these little seeds of doubt and everything else. 
that they end up going and doing something that they would not have normally done. Now, I'm not saying that necessarily what Mark and what Laura are saying is the cause of anyone going out to do that. But what I am saying, it is easy for people. People don't know people's vulnerabilities. They don't know how fragile people are. And you don't know who you're putting this information onto. So what I'm saying is that there are people out there who do not know what to do with the information. They're not rational. They, you know, like I said, some of them are bullied. Some of them are lonely. Some of them are sick. And if they, if the wrong person hears that kind of information and is in the right, and is in the wrong frame of mind at the time, that could be the result. Even though somebody like Mark Tollett, Mark Collett, and Laura Towler didn't intend for that outcome to happen, it can happen because you're dealing with fragile people, you're dealing with angry people, you're dealing with people who are resentful and who feel betrayed. And when you feed people like that and say, it's them, it's not us, it's them. They're taking away our country. They're taking away our jobs. They're taking away our homes. It's them. Then you have a problem. And how do you stop that? You can't stop it. Like I said, it's so insidious. Who knows that they're even doing it? No one knows. Online safety radicalizes extreme social influences are creative in their thinking, approach and language and open platforms, often steering their subscribers into private platforms. That um, campaign I was telling you about is called We Were Never Asked. The book I was telling you about, The Fall of the Western Man. So, the avoids putting in links, leaves a lot to the imagination, implies um, by association with that evidence, vague incidental connections. And, um, yeah. So that's all I'm going to say for now. Your comments would be appreciated. Don't crucify me, please. That's all for now.